Welcome back to A Closer Look. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. My guest this hour is Stella Robinette. She's no stranger to A Closer Look. We like to have her on a lot. She's got a lot to say about this really <laughs> neat organization she's involved with, HOPE, Help Our Potential Evolve. She is the founder. Thank you for joining us today, Stella. Thank you for having me. Tell us what HOPE is for those that may have never heard of it before. Okay. Well, HOPE stands for Help Our Potential Evolve. It's a nonprofit organization that works with youth 11 to 19 years of age, teaching them life skill lessons such as banking, uh, paying their bills, uh, not living beyond their means, um, how to invest, uh, those type of things. And we help them also um, get ready for college or trade school. Um, Whatever the case may be, we just had three graduates uh, this year. So one went to King, one went to uh, Northeast, and one went to uh, Belladonna Academy. She wants to be a nail tech. Nice. So not college is not for everybody, mm -hmm. but, but we're getting them ready for the real world is what we're trying to do. I love that because these are often kids that don't have the life skills they, they aren't learning them from home for whatever their situation may be at home they aren't learning these skills that often we take for granted yes exactly and if it wasn't for y'all i mean where else are they going to learn this this is where people really fall through the cracks don't you think exactly absolutely because uh, we don't have a home <coughs> ec anymore so one mm -hmm. of our programs is hope for health um, where we teach them how to eat healthy, you know, I mean, we yeah. all about that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we started this year is uh, we started because of the pandemic. Uh, we signed our kids up for the Y so they'd be able to at least get exercise because that's before mm -hmm. the schools kind of opened mm -hmm. up and they semi opened for a lot of kids uh, where they can get exercise. Mm -hmm. um, we want to keep them healthy, mm -hmm. uh, especially with this pandemic. They need to stay healthy, mm -hmm. and just in case, we hope they don't, but just in case, you know, they'll be able to survive, hopefully, this virus that's going around. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one thing that we added this year. Uh, we always used to prep for the crazy eight race yeah so this way they can just do it year round and they do it at their leisure too as well uh, they have mentors that goes with them so as the mentors go the the youth can go with their mentor uh, some of our older kids can go on their own if they drive so we're really excited about that you hit on something i mean health of our community Obesity is just crazy awful right now in our yes. community and in our country. And staying healthy is so important, especially with COVID right now. And unfortunately, you're right, we don't teach a lot of this stuff in school like, like we used to. No, we and don't. And if you're raised in a family that didn't learn proper eating habits itself, they gotta learn it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So thank goodness you guys do this. It's such a basic, important thing that we all need to learn to stay healthy and thrive. Right. And so when, when farmers market, usually when it opens up, mm -hmm. we take them to the farmers market to get them used to buying fresh fruit and vegetables there. Uh, I mean, we go to Food City too mm -hmm. as well, but that we usually do that in the winter months. Well, because of COVID, you know, we were kind of limited, but now we're getting it worked out where Good. we're gonna be able to take them small groups at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think when you involving kids into making healthy snacks, eating mm -hmm. healthy, buying their own produce and products, uh, I think they tend to eat it a lot better too as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say to always shop the perimeter of the store first. Yes. Most of your grocery cart should have the perimeter and then maybe add some stuff from the middle part of the store because that's the healthiest foods. Well, this is what we teach when we go to Food City and usually Food City is so kind to have their nutritionist to come with us. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they start with the vegetables and the fresh fruits. Uh, they cannot buy canned. 
uh, they have oh. to buy frozen. Good. And she talks to them about the difference between a block cheese and a shredded cheese, mm -hmm. which I have learned a lot of things too as well. It's oh, better yeah. to buy the block and do it yourself Absolutely. than to shred it. Okay, she talks to them about the milk and what kind of milk they should be. So when they learn in all of this and they purchasing these items, uh, I just think it makes it better for them. And then we also, when we were doing this, we added in outside people or community youth to come in and join us too as well. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to be a hope okay. uh, leader to be able to shop with us because the more the merrier because what happens is each kid gets $20, mm -hmm. but 10 of it is donated. Okay, mm -hmm. so ten dollars worth of food they go home with. Food City packages it where they can get a whole full meal for their ten dollars. They know that we're coming, mm -hmm. and they do that. So we still operating around in the area. We didn't get to have our fundraiser this year. Our goal is to try to raise at least fifteen thousand dollars by March. I know that's hard. But in order to keep our programs going, that's what we need um, to keep us going. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Well, very good. And just for those that are wondering, the difference between the shredded cheese and the block cheese isn't just price. They add chemicals to the shredded cheese so that it doesn't clump. And therefore, the block cheese is always a lot healthier. Yes. Just thought I'd add that. Absolutely. Now, Stella, on the screen here, you'll see some pictures. Describe those pictures. What are those that we're looking at? Okay. Her name is Jasmine, mm -hmm. and she is our youth that went to King, and we had a drive through party for them because we couldn't have a graduation party for them. So people drove through, and they put the gifts and things in the back of their oh, car. Nice. So that's her. And, um, we have these ladies that sew pillowcases for us. And so the kids was not able to take them out to the nursing homes and hospitals and things. So we invited churches to help us with that. Thankful Baptist and Central Baptist Church. And any church that wants to come and get some, they can for the elderly and the sick and the shut in. Mm -hmm. And so they delivered them out to people and with it they had a Bible verse <coughs> and they me. had uh, a devotional and then they had the sewing ladies that sewed it their organization and then Hope was the one that donated so that's one of our graduates too that's Javion Hall and he is the one that's going to um, Northeast we're very proud of him Okay, that is so. great. I love all these pictures. Yes, and, and that's a couple that Thankful Baptist, they helped them out there too. Uh, the person in the blue shirt, that's Dr. Keith Johnson. He works at Northeast. He's the head of the engineering department and oh. other things. I don't know. Okay. He's been an award winner over there in Johnson <laughs> City. But his wife is a volunteer with us. That's Jasmine getting all set up in her oh. dorm. So she she's a happy camper seven. over there. She's a cheerleader for them oh, nice. and actually got a scholarship for cheering with the uh, King, going to King, so. Good for her. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, you mentioned you haven't been able to have events this year like in the past because right. organizations like yours depend on the kindness of others and donations to make them run. So how can people help out right now since you aren't having these events? Well, one thing, they can send in donations. They can go on our website at hopetricities.com mm -hmm. or they can phone me at 423-276-6541 or they can mail in at our P.O. Box 7632, Kingsport 37664. All right. Now, if people want to remember all that information, because that was a lot of information, <laughs> if you want to revisit that information, you can Google HOPE on the internet and all that information to be there. You guys can yes. get the phone number right there. So, again, the uh, website's HopeTriCities.com. HopeTriCities.com. All the information is there address, phone number, all kinds of ways. In any amount you can give will help this fabulous program to help empower our youth to be responsible adults for our community. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Stella? 
I'd just like everyone to really check out our website and learn more about us. I love it. So you've been around though, it's been 12 years already, am yes, I right? Yes, absolutely. Wow, you've been doing a lot of good for a lot of kids. Do any of the kids come back and tell you about how your program helped well, them out so much? Well, they do. We just had one that was on our board. So uh, she worked, or she started job shadowing at the nursery down here at, at, in Kingsport, mm -hmm. close to the Northeast. And uh, then she went to Northeast. Now she's back in school again, and she works for Kingsport City as a educator. So she's doing good. I love that. These success stories are what make you realize this is so worthwhile. So again, HopeTriCities.com, Stella Robinette, the founder of this wonderful organization. And we really appreciate you being here, Stella. I mean, I hope you're able to raise the money you need. Now, last year you were the 100 plus Tri-Cities Women Who Care recipient. Yes. And that was fantastic, but that money is now gone. It doesn't take long for the, this to dissipate, and we need all the help we can get right now. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being here today. HopeTriCities.com. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back this time next week with another edition of A Closer Look. Stay healthy and well.